it was surprising the quantity of evidence that we've got. Uh, people who were very much involved in international trade, stretching as far as China, and also who were moving trade goods further into Africa as well, into the interior of Ethiopia, and as well as evidence for the first Islamization of the region, which is exciting. So the residents of Hala were Muslims, but um, who or what were they ethnically? Ethnically, it's difficult to work out from archaeological evidence. We've been fortunate in that the local community has encouraged us because they wanted to examine the myth that you referred to, the giant myth, to excavate a few burials, which we've done very carefully. So we've been able to take tooth samples from those to do isotopic analysis in order to be able to work out from the isotopes what their diet might have been and therefore that where their origins might be. But forgetting that evidence, we haven't done that analysis yet, I would suggest that it was a mixed community of both indigenous people from the region as well as some outsiders, possibly from the Arabian Peninsula, possibly also from Western India and certainly from other parts of sub-Saharan Africa as well. And were they as tall as legend has it? No, they weren't. The excavations of the burials show that the three that we've excavated carefully so far are young adults or late teens of average stature. They wouldn't look out of place in a high street today, slightly smaller even perhaps. So how come the legend grew up, do you think? The legend grew up because there are all these inexplicable, until we started our work, stone towns that are abandoned across this part of Ethiopia and into Somaliland. And one of the features of these towns or characteristics of the towns is their architecture And the stone architecture is often made from massive stone blocks, beautifully shaped massive stone blocks, and sometimes incorporating huge natural boulders as well. So the thinking was that how could a human being do this sort of work? The only sort of human being that could do this sort of work is a giant human being. But of course, it could be done with ropes and with tackle and with sheer brute labour. And that's what we're finding out now. And why did such a, a thriving, apparently, community die out? We're not sure of the term, what, why exactly at the moment. Here, we'd have to step outside the archaeology and step towards the history. What's probable, and what our hypothesis is at the moment, is that um, as Islamization proceeded and progressed, they felt more secure, this population, and it's in rather an isolated um, location. It's not the best for water. They moved up to the better watered highlands, and gradually this um, settlement was abandoned in favour of, for example, the city of Hara, which flourishes as a major Muslim centre today in the region. So by the 6th, or was it the 7th century, they were all gone? No, no, that's the start. By about the 15th century was the end, starting 7th, ending 15th century, and moving, as I say, further up into the highlands. 